For an enterprising tycoon, each new day brings new opportunities in your quest for success. Exploiting gaps in the market and meeting demand is all in a day's work for a canny entrepreneur. And expanding your business is necessary if you're to keep up with the times. But with capitalism comes competition. Astute rivals and self-sufficient towns will soon leave you looking for that next niche in the market. And a change of entrepreneurial tactics might be necessary in order to fend off financial collapse. However, be wary of your fledgling setup. A poorly planned infrastructure will grind your business to a halt. And badly placed polluting industry will be sure to harm your reputation and quickly turn your business allies into foes. But the savvy business person will have all this under control with well-executed trade routes by road, water, air, and rail. And a well-targeted PR campaign will soon have those green towns and villages back on side and accepting your goods. All that's left to worry about is what you're going to produce next. For you are an industrialist, and success is in your blood. And who knows what the next new day will bring in Rise of Industry. Good day, everyone, and obviously welcome to a brand new series and a brand new episode. And in this one, we'll be looking at Rise of Industry. Now, we did play Rise of Industry, oh gosh, way back when the channel first started. That's over a year ago now. Oh, man, that's a long time ago. Anyway, uh, we did start it before. And we got to the point where we got an update and basically we couldn't load all our save games. So I basically put the game, you know, away. But they've come a long way in the last year. Updates, some mods. Um, it's, it's a very different game, I would have to say. Very different game. And for that very reason today, when we start off, the first thing we'll be doing is having a look at the tutorial. Now, as I said, we did play it before. And if you've seen the game before, I would suggest to you that it's going to look different in this version. Now, obviously, the graphics are the same, but the gameplay very much revised. I'm looking forward to doing it, and I hope you are too. So without further ado... Let you and I both go in and learn, because to be honest, the last time I opened the game was, as I said, over a year ago. So we're all on a learning curve on this one. So um, welcome everyone to Rise of Industry. Uh, and of course, also welcome everyone to the Gig Channel, which is, as you know, the Grumpy Is Gamer Channel. So here we are. We're at Chapwick. Now, there's a thing we might have to look in in the future because I do know there is a mod out to change the names to Australian towns. So that might be well and truly worth doing. But anyway, that's not for today. Today, we are tutorializing ourselves. Welcome to Rise of Industry, a game about testing your entrepreneurial skills. Here are some instructions to give you a head start. Uh, I'm going to go with next. To start off, let us learn to move around and use the camera. Use the keyboard and mouse to pan, zoom and rotate the camera. Holding shift speeds up the movement. All right. Uh, w, A, S and D. W, A, S and D. Yeah, done that. W, A, S and D plus shift. A, S, D for faster movement. Use the right mouse button to pan. Panning. Use Q and E to rotate. Q, E, Q, E, Q, E, Q, E, E, Q. Thank you. And use the scroll wheel or page up and page down to zoom. Page up. No, that's mouse wheel. Page. 
What? Whoa. To build in a region that you don't control, you need a permit. It's not as easy as just buying it. And there's, uh, as there's a free market, you can start an auction and bid enough to gain control of it. Open Chapwick Town Centre. Thank you. Open Chapwick Region tab. Right. Now, is that region defined? Yes, it is. There we have the border. So I guess, according to... Now, where's that go? Oh, it goes down there, around there, through there. Yep, okay. Doesn't look like a bad area, does it? Certainly not in the middle. Okay, we want to... We want to move this, I think, first of all, to there. Oh, look, it's Newton Circus, which is a great place to eat if you happen to be in Singapore. Um, actually, yeah, maybe not like it used to be. But, yeah, not bad. Uh, okay, let's start an auction and keep bidding until your competitors have give up, allowing you to earn ownership of that region. Be careful to not run out of money. Oh, okay. Start an Oh, start an auction. All oh, right. Start an auction. Really? I'm starting at 1.78 million? Okay. How do I know how much money I've got? Where? Hang on. Where is my money? Where's my money? Show me the money. Budget overview. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have a, um, doesn't have a display of how much cash you've got. That's kind of interesting. All right, well, start an option. Bid, bid. Oh, hang on. Permit auction. 20%. My corporation. Do, what? I, what if I don't want to be called my corporation? Oh, very well. My corp plus 20%. Sure. My corporation. Plus twenty. Whoa. What? Full build permit price one point seven eight. One. My corp one point seven eight. Hundred and forty percent. Two point four nine million. What? Oh, I'm in the red for two point four nine million. That's that's great. That's just super duper. Closed Chapwick Town Centre Planel. Planel? That's a planel. Bet you didn't know that was a planel. Once we start an auction, other companies will be able to bid on the permit. If you place your headquarters, it automatically gives you that region's permit at no cost. What? Well, why didn't you tell me that before I spent $2.4 million? Seriously? Oh, me. Oh, what? Hang on. Now I'm not in debt anymore. If you scan the map a little, you can find the other companies on the map. They have the same abilities we do and are trying to do the same thing we're doing. So be careful. Hang on. Let's, what did that say? At no cost. Okay, next. And then suddenly the fact that we were in debt went away. So if we scan the map, there's a place over there, we can find that other companies are trying to do the same thing that we're trying to do. Regional town centre. Except I can't click on them. How do I know they're there? Um, oh, well, there's something. Maybe they're in Canning. Hang on. Stop, pause the game. Pause play. Okay, how? February the 9th. Um, it doesn't seem to want to let me pause. Um, one, two, no, that doesn't work. Okay. 
maybe you can't pause the tutorial okay let's start building our first production line first we need a water siphon to collect raw materials right? all right i'm a bit worried that i can't pause the game should i be worried well i think we're in chapwick how do we know if we're in chapwick okay uh we need water so we need a water siphon like other gatherers collects raw resources to be used in farms and factories to generate other products press r to rotate the building select water siphon in the construction bar so whoa place a water siphon in the highlighted area well the highlighted area is not going to be over there is it is it oh that's a water siphon uh, according to the way that map looks i think it's that how does that grab everybody sure why not can't place it. Of course I can't place it there. I just built it. Okay, after placing the water siphon, it will need a new harvester. Oh, it will need a few harvesters placed. A harvester collects a raw resources and brings it back to the gatherer. You may need to rotate the harvester to place it. Well, that's very possibly true. Well, I've placed you. And so far, I'm in debt by $250,000. After placing the water siphon, it will need a few harvesters placed. A harvester collects a raw resource. Yeah, okay. Blah, blah, blah. Place two harvesters in highlighted area. Oh, right. Okay. They are two harvesters. Now we need to place roads to get the water to the water siphon. Roads are the only way trucks move across the map. If a road is not connected, it will have a roadblock at the end. Now, that was a good idea because I remember in the first episode when we did this, there was a point where we didn't actually join a road up properly, like we missed by a little slither. And it took for ages to find it, to know that the road was disconnected and didn't join. So that's a good thing. Open the road construction panel place the road by clicking and dragging over the highlights the dirt road is your basic transportation medium you can place to allow trucks to move between buildings well that's just jim jimity dandy now there's a roadblock there uh, but it's not connected anywhere is it Place the road by clicking. Okay, well, it would seem that we have to do that, possibly. Then that. Um, hey, it still doesn't. Still do, why didn't it join up? Do you have to do that? No, oh, you have to do that. Right. Oh, it automatically, automatically generates its own trucks. Well, let's have a look. Are they water bottles? No, I don't think they're water bottles. Well, that's, that's cool. So the trucks go from there to there automatically. Excellent. Next. Uh, the water siphon is running. Raw, se raw ceases? Raw. <laughs> Where? All right. Maybe I should have had more water. No, maybe I should have had more coffee this morning. The water siphon is running. Raw resources like water and sand can be collected infinitely as long as you keep paying the upkeep. Well, we're paying the upkeep. But we need to make money at some point. Some other resources like coal, copper, gas, iron and oil have a limited amount of units available for collecting. We will have to be careful how we use them. We will, won't we? Oh. Gatherers for these raw resources need to be placed near their corresponding resource, but do not need roads. Interesting. 
to connect the harvesters and hubs to function. Open gatherer tab in the construction bar, place a coal mine. Okay. Well, that was the water siphon we used before. This is the coal mine, and it already wants us to put it there. Yeah, so we'll put it where it wants us to put it. Place one coal mine, not two, but one. Place three coal mine harvesters, yeah? Sure, we can do that. And I think we'll come over here, actually, and have a bit of a closer look at this. One. Uh, which way are you facing? I can't tell. Yes, I can. Two. Two. And I'm going to go with three. Okay. Uh, close the coal mining building panel. Which is that one, right? Sure. Ooh. Lumberyard harvesters have an area of effect where it will select up to four trees closest to them for exclusive use. For each tree reserved, it will increase its production rate by 25%. Lumberyard harvesters have an area of effect. Right. When it, where it will set up to four trees closest to it. For each tree reserved, and increase production rate by 25%. Right. So, Lumber Yard uses harvesters to collect units of wood from nearby trees. After harvesting a tree, it will plant a sapling in its place. That seems like a good idea. Now, that... Yeah, that's a fairly big reach, actually, isn't it? Yep. That's the Lumber Yard three harvesters and it will deal up to four ah oh, see it's not telling us where to put these we can do these on our own place three well okay what chapel region center Wait a minute. I'm now confused. Did we just place this outside of chapel? Where we're supposed to be operating? Or are we in everything including the region centre? Oh, oh. Everyone gets a region centre, maybe? Oh, now that's interesting, isn't it? So that's... That's... Ch Chapwick. Then there's a region centre. Which is still defined. Newton, region centre. Canning... Does Canning have a region centre? Yes, it does. And then there's a region centre there and a region centre there. Now I'm confused. Hmm. All right, we need to look at that later on. But for now, let's go with these three. And quite possibly, we should put... Oh, it's going to be difficult to isolate this so we don't get overlap. Oh, no, there's one there. Oh, it wants us to place... That. Why does it want us to go there? That's one. Well, that's a bit silly, isn't it? Because that means it doesn't get exclusive use of any of these trees. Except the four closest to it. I'm confused now. So where does it want the third one? Oh, really?
That is bizarre. Hang on, that is bizarre. Lumber yard one, building efficiency 100. Now, you can't tell me. Four closest trees. One, two, three, four. You know what? I don't know. Trees and fish will deplete, but they are renewable. Fish will respawn over time, and we can plant trees, then wait for them to grow. Open terraforming window. Trees and fish will deplete, but they are renewable. Place 10 trees near the... Really? Which grows into a tree over a duration. Well, correct English should be over time, but sure, one, two, three... Three, four, five, six. You happy with that? Oh, six. I've got to plant ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. Close terraforming menu. Well, yeah, I can do that. The warehouse acts as a hub for a small area on the map. Once placed, it will coordinate the collection and distribution of products amongst the buildings within its radius. Open the Logistics tab. Click on Warehouse. That's a warehouse. Zeppelin Field. Oh, they've got to have one of those. Okay. Um, shift. Left click. Rotate. Ah, there you go, shift left, rotate. The warehouse acts as a hub. Well, that's true, but the only thing in that hub is water. When a building generates a product, it will send that product to the warehouse. The water siphon, for example, will send water to the warehouse to be stored. Select dirt road. Yours. Dirt road. And build one. Cool. Oh. Well, I could have done that more efficiently than you've just done, but anyway. Once stored, the water is transported to where it is needed. Like a crop farm, which uses water to generate farm produce that can be sold or used for other recipes. Open the tech tree. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, okay. It won't let you click on things, actually, outside of the thing. Okay, tech tree. Ooh. At the beginning of each game, we get three... three oh, here, yeah, oh, gosh. At the beginning of each game, we get three free unlocks. Oh, boy, I wish I'd have had some scotch the morning. After that, we have to spend money and time to research and unlock. After we select some unlocks, let's place that crop farm. Sure. Unlock wheat, vegetables, and flour. Wheat. Egg tools. Where's flour? Flour. Sure. As a note. We add more unlocks to a research queue to continuously research them while we work on other things. Ah. Open Basics Distribution Tree and select Truck Depot. This is good. Warehouse. Oh. Truck Depot. Yep, selected that. Open Logistics Admin. Tree, right? Select one-way roads and air purifier. One-way roads. Air purifier. Close. Tech tree. Cool. 
Now that we are researching truck depots, the research progress bar appears in the upper left hand corner. Now we're doing one way roads. Uh, hold on, we haven't finished that one. Uh, the research progress bar appears in the upper left hand corner. It usually takes a bunch of time, but for the sake of learning, let's speed it up. You certainly did, didn't you? You did. Let's place the crop farm. Open farms tab in the construction menu. Construction. Farms. Let's move you out of the way for a minute. This is a crop farm. And apparently, you're going to go there. Ooh, place three fields in the highlighted area. One. Why three? Two. Three. Okay. The crop farm, like all farms, are like gatherers, except they use fields instead of harvesters, which don't need roads to operate. All they require... Uh, no. All they require... All they require water or wheat to generate goods. All they require is water or wheat to generate goods. Grammar, dear boy, grammar. Close crop farm building, Penel. Once we place once we place a road between the warehouse and the crop farm, good call, the warehouse will begin sending water to the crop farm automatically. Clever water. Like, oh, oh. Our crop farm is ready to produce something. If we check the farmer's market, we will see vegetables have a higher value than wheat. So let's set our crop farm's production to vegetables. Open Chapwick's market. Is that the market? Farmer's market. Right. Open the crop farm production tab. Your production tab. Set the crop farm's production to vegetables. Um, vegetables. Right, uh, there you go. Set the vegetables. Close the farmer's market and crop farm building panel. Yep, are we making vegetables? Whoa, look, there are trucks everywhere. Congratulations, we now have a working vegetable production line. So let's start making some money by selling our vegetables. Open Networks Construction tab. Yes. Place a road connecting the warehouse to Chapwood. I'm going to go with Shaw. Oh. Hmm. That's interesting. That is very interesting, very sort of unique way of doing it. Products can also be moved between other warehouses using the logistics system. We can place one warehouse and one depot of each type in, region, in a region, even if we don't own the building, the build permit. Can we? Products can also be moved between other warehouses using the logistics system. We can place a warehouse and a depot of each type. So what did, how many types of depots are there? This is a good question. Oh, boat depot, train depot, warehouse, okay. Trade depots allow warehouses to make requests of each for products they need before making a request a truck depot needs to be placed within the range of each warehouse. Place warehouse in Newton's farmers markets. Okay. Ah. Place a truck depot near Newton and Chapwick Warehouse. Well, where's Newton and Chapwick Warehouse? Between. Truck depot. Between Newton and Chapwick Warehouse.
place truck depot near Newton. I'll end Chapwick Warehouse. Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, that's kind of easy. Open Newton Warehouse. Okay. Once depots of the same type are placed near each relative warehouse, we can make requests between warehouses. Let us make a request. Okay, click the pass button. Select vegetables. I don't see vegetables. Farm produce. Oh, vegetables. Right. Set amount to 10 units. So we can store up to 10 vegetables. If there are multiple trade depot types within range of the warehouse, that's the depot, right? Trade depot types. We can limit which vehicle will move the good. We also adjust our current request using the logistics routes panel. Open a logistics routes panel. Uh, Oh, it's up there. Oh, okay. So what are all these? State, global market, logistics routes panel, farm produce, vegetables. Select farm produce and then vegetables. Yeah. If and, uh, and vegetables, right. Last month zero. This month zero. Warehouse. Two vegetables root. Closed logistics route. We can adjust this, right? On top. Okay. When we send product to a shop with a settlement within a settlement or the state, mm, now it's getting complicated. The product will be sold for money. This funding can now be used to expand our product lines and research new tech. Open Chapwick's warehouse building panel. Right. Click on the destination tabs. I remember that. Select that what? Click on the destinations tab. Select vegetables as product. Oh, right, okay. Vegetables as product. Click to choose destination. Select the farmer's market. Uh, commercial. Chapwick Farmer's Market. Sure. Note whenever assigning a destination, we will only see buildings that will accept the chosen product with the destination at the top of the list being the closest choice. Very good. After assigning a destination, we can choose the maximum amount stored. We can leave the value at infinite, which will keep sending product to the destination unit and there, which will keep sending product to the destination until its storage is full. All right. We can also set a specific amount at the destination to be stored, allowing us to fine tune our production lines. Use the plus button, button to change the amount stored to five. Minimum amount stored at source, maximum amount stored at source. Right, maximum amount will be stored, will be five units. Close warehouse one unit. So we store and make this five. We can use the same method of micromanaging destinations to any building, but we forego using the warehouse to automatically distribute products. Oh, I see. If we don't touch the warehouse, it automatically distributes the product to where it's requested to go. But if we micromanage it down to that level, then we can't do that. So how does that work, I wonder, with the warehouse-to-warehouse -warehouse stuff? 
Eventually, we will want to start producing higher tier products to generate higher profits. Factories are in Factories are buildings that follow a selected recipe to generate a product similar to farms. Open factory construction menu. Right. Place a food factory, which is this dude here, right there. Which is in the middle of, it appears to be, nowhere but your food factory. Place the road between warehouse and factory. Okay. So far, everything makes sense. There you go. Pollution is a poisonous effect that harms land and water tiles. If left unchecked, pollution will slow the production of water and farms and cause settlements to shrink and die. I'm assuming that's a bad thing. Open pollution management construction. Uh, pollution is represented as a graying of the map. We can use trees to stem the tide a little, but the more efficient way to remove pollution is to use a cleaner building. Really? Water treatment plant. What are you? An air purifier. Place air purifier near food factory. Really? It, it's that bad it needs an air purifier? Alright, 125,000k. Each pollution management building requires a different good to remove the pollution from a radius around the building. Keeping everything clean keeps everyone happy. Mm, okay. Another aspect of rise of industry we should cover is traffic. As we add more buildings to your production lines, there will be more trucks on the roads, which will cause delays. To alleviate this problem, we can use the logistics system and utilize different vehicles, or we can micromanage our street networking using one-way roads. Open network construction, blah, blah, blah. Select one-way road. One-way roads are like urban roads, except both lanes go in the same direction. The direction is determined by the direction we drag and drop the one-way road into place. Place one-way road from warehouse to air purifier. Um, does anyone need to know that that's not going to end well? Uh, seriously? There are also land bridges to pass over roads. If managed right, we can prevent traffic coming to a screeching halt, preventing our products from getting delivered on time. So, I don't understand what you need to scrub the air. Oh, you need water. Do you? I'm guessing you need water. Yes, you need water. Okay, that's fine. If traffic does become a problem, we can use the map layers to see where our trucks are getting jammed and then after the traffic pattern, and then alter the traffic patterns to fix the problems. Open the map layers. Map layers, thank you. Wow. Click show traffic heat map somewhere. Well, it's all green, so it's not a problem. Map layers also give you access to a variety of different information about the map. If you need more specific data about the map, we can use the query tool. Close map layers. We can. PR and management event. Map layers also give you a variety of different information about the map. Close the map. Select query tool. So why wouldn't it be... Why is the query tool the exclamation mark? The query tool is used to tell you the detailed information about the tile your cursor is over. It will tell you tile type, pollution rating, building type, and much more. Close query tool pane. Well, if I hold... Ooh. 
There are some other tools we have at our disposal. If we hit the tab key, a series of labels will appear displaying the name of settlements, shops, resources, and the names of our buildings. So, that is the tab button. Oh, we did get a headquarters there. Where's our... Where's our... See, I'm confused. Cycle through the tab options. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Pressing the Alt button will cause production bubbles to appear above each of your bu our buildings that show the production progress of each building. Air purifier. I don't know why that popped up, but anyway. Uh, progress of each building. It will fill up with green when working right. Press the Alt button to make bubbles appear. It will fill up with green. If traffic... No. All right. Now, before we go to 52, I want to go back... Oh. That's kind of sad. I was trying to go... I wanted to go back and have a look at what happens to um, warehouse to warehouse. But maybe another time. Uh, to make the bubbles disappear... Oh, see, that's three quarters full. And that's not full at all. And that is not green, anywhere near green. Okay, press the Alt button again to make the bubbles disappear. Congratulations, you have completed the tutorial and know the absolute basics. Go start a new game. Maybe start slow with the newcomer difficulty and get rich. Sure, why not? Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering. No, I, I can have a look at that offline if I want to. Okay, so there we are. Uh, we have done the tutorial. Now, build your own empire with nothing but a little money and a dream. Set your own difficulty. Grow through the tech tree and rise to the top. This sounds like the place for young lads like us. I'm a millennial. We have time for this. Whoa, uh, ooh, England, ooh, Germany, Spain, United States, England, Germany, Spain, United States, England, Germany, Spain, um, you know what, I think Ermini, River generation. I don't know what that means. Two rivers. Map size is medium. Road orientation is left. Ha ha! I don't know if they do that in Germany, but where I live, that's what we do. Preset. Pre-made difficulty settings. All right, let's see what we've got. Newcomer. Hmm. Experienced. Oh, okay. Hang on. It shows up down here. No traffic. Pollution intensity is 50%. Terraforming, yes. Dispatch cost 50%. Upkeep, 50%. Easy event difficulty. Ooh, I wonder what events you get. Resource availability, 125. Infinite resources, yes. Product pricing, settlement demand. Ooh. Ooh. Total difficulty score based on settings, 20%. Okay. Total difficulty score based on settings. Now, this is experienced. Traffic is yes. Oh, I like traffic. Pollution intensity, 100%. Terraforming, yes. Dispatch costs, dispatch costs have gone up, and so is upkeep. Event difficulty is normal. Resource availability has dropped. Infinite resources, product, product, blah, blah, blah. What's next? Veteran, 185%, and startup is 280, and custom is 280. Wow. Um, wow. I, I really don't know where to start, actually, to be honest. I definitely want traffic. 
pollution into you know what this seems like the experienced one seems like everything is average and I think that's a fair description of me I think I could aspire to be average so that's where we're going to go we're going to have a look at average and we're going to play but unfortunately everyone that's 46 minutes into an episode. So when our new map comes up, I'm going to call it an episode. And uh, start the gameplay in the very next episode. But what I really want to see... Uh, actually, you know what I really want to see is... Uh, don't show again. Welcome to Rise of Industry. Let's begin by placing the headquarters. You can place it anywhere and it will grant a full permit for the region it's in. If you want to, you can disable these helpers in the interface menu. Well, let's have a look at our map. I feel that that's a decision we could make while we're here. Okay, so... Look at the size of that territory compared to the size of this territory. The question is why? Maybe that's just the way it is. Spec. See, we've got... Uh, uh, see, there's size. All right, hold on. Prospering. Status. Recipe book. Shop overview. Where is speed? Menu. Resume. That's probably a good way to pause. Okay, what's this? Shop overview, recipe book, player and competitors. My corporation. Okay, well, I think. All right. Well, there's oil. I'm going to divide it up this way. And Abenrud. Osterfeld. Ooh, Osterfeld's a good German name. Bleds, Bledesbach. Bledesbach. Oh dear. Oberlandenbeck. Holy do we. Ober. Over. Land. Over land. Hmm, okay. Karl should. I bet they should. Kriftel. Uh, Kriftel doesn't look like it's got oil. At least not that I can see. And certainly not in the water. Hmm. It's, it's um, interesting. That's a big... Let's have a look. 20,000 population. They've got... Well, they've got the three... Ironmongery. But it's stagnating. Okay. That may not be what we want. I led us back is of interest, but it's small. See how small it is? But Oberlander Beck is quite big. And I would have to say that Karlshult Hult Karlshut is quite large. But size doesn't necessarily mean good. This has got oil. Oil is not a bad commodity to have. But I don't know what else it's got. Per se. Um, spec. Well, it's easy to pronounce. Kalsut and Krifso. Aberod and Osterfeld. What's Aberod doing? It's everyone's stagnating at the moment. There's something to be said for having a large population. There's also something to be said for having a small one. It's got a hardware store and a farmer's market. Hardware store and a farmer's market. We obviously 
and a half years stored in a file as well. Okay, five thousand. So that's actually quite small. That's possibly the smallest town on the map. Hmm. I quite like the concept of going here actually. Um, how do we how do we check resources? Farms, gathered coal. So where did it where did it see coal? Is coal there? Oh, we can see stuff on the map. Um, duplicate, no. Farms, gatherers, bridges, tunnels. Help over there. Could we... Could we not get a resource overview? Could we not? That's coal, but that's that's nothing apparently. But the black is coal. Tunnels, bridges, gatherers. All right. Um. 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 um terraforming. Ministry of Building Prototype Facility. Prototype. Well, we do need the place headquarters. Oh dear. Abinrod. 7,000. Abinrod is. Well, we know there's coal there. What's that? Copper. Oh, okay. What have we got over here? I quite like this one, you know. Um, it's reasonably large. Got plenty of water. Good flat area. Um, and it's close to Osterfeld and Albert Schacht. So I think we'll go Avernode. So the question is, where would we like to place our headquarters? And I think um, this seems like a fairly reasonable spot. Uh, actually, I might come out of town just a little bit, just in case there's some more things that I can place. But there you go. We are in Abenrod. And uh, that's where we're going to okay, target building. Toggle pin panel. Minimize panel and close panel. Right. Please keep in mind. Please keep in mind this is an industrial simulator game. Try to find out what towns want instead of producing products you might never be able to sell due to non-existing demand. Click on the various settlements to see what shops they have. Okay, well, we did deliberately pick this one because um, it has the basics. It has a hardware store and a farmer's market, and it's stagnating. It's not the smallest town, but it's not the biggest either, and it has a good area, lots of flat land out here and down here, but it also has um, some resources, coal being one we found, but more importantly, from the way I was looking at it, it's got the flat land for farming and it's got plenty of water for the farms. And, and if we're lucky, we can get some fishing in as well. And then, of course, we can move some of our produce over here to the large farm uh, town of Osterfeld. And uh, I think that's going to be very good for us. Now, I think our map name... It's going to be um, German, because the towns are German. Um, well, we could quote Bismarck, 
Kommen. Blood, which I think is actually I don't know, but let's go blood und Feld. Uh, that's probably very bad German for blood and iron. Um, so we're going to go in there now. I I actually think it would be fun, not just to play the game, but to role play the game. Um, so if those of you who have been watching the Workers and Resources Soviet Republic know that we've set out deliberately in that game at the moment um, to do um, a farming republic. Big, 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 big farming republic. And I do happen to have a soft spot for the farming community. So I think I'd like to do the same thing in this game. Now, that doesn't mean we won't do industrial and all that stuff, but I think the backbone of our industry is going to be um, farming, agriculture, and let's try and crush everybody in terms of farm produce and really corner the market in that way um, and make it a that being our big thing. I know, you know, you can be an industrialist and you can generalise and blah, 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 but, but nothing succeeds in the real world, um, or actually IRL, uh, like specialisation and focus. So that, I think, is where we'll be at starting in episode two. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you're as excited to play this game as I am. And I am really looking forward now that we've um, put a, uh, a, a an idea on. Ooh, 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 sorry, stop that. Now that we've put an idea on what we're going to do, uh, that we can get in and actually play the game. Ooh, ooh, there's a fire station. That's cool. All right, we're finished with you. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me today. I will see you in episode two. Until then, stay well. And as always, I'll see you later. Bye.